now have the tools for calculating three important RLC quantities, total voltage, current, and impedance in series RLC circuits. Let's see how parallel RLC circuits differ. You already know that in a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same across each branch. Let's consider the current relationships in each component. As was mentioned earlier, the AC voltage across a resistor is in phase with the resistive current. However, the inductive current lags the inductive voltage by 90 degrees, while the capacitive current leads the capacitive voltage by 90 degrees. Here is a phasor diagram representing these current relationships in a parallel RLC circuit. As was true of the reactive voltages in a series RLC circuit, you can see that the capacitive current is 180 degrees out of phase with the inductive current. Because this is true, you can simply subtract the inductive current from the capacitive current to find the total reactive current. In this example, parallel RLC circuit, the inductive current is 6 milliamps and the capacitive current is 10 milliamps. The total reactive current will be I sub C minus I sub L or 10 milliamps minus 6 milliamps, which yields a total reactive current of 4 milliamps. In another case, suppose that the inductive current is 9 milliamps and the capacitive current is 6 milliamps. In this circuit, the total reactive current would be I sub C minus I sub L, or 6 milliamps minus 9 milliamps, which yields minus 3 milliamps. The minus sign in this case indicates a current lagging by 90 degrees. You now know how to calculate the total reactive current in a parallel RLC circuit. To find the total current in a parallel RLC circuit, the 90 degree phase relationship between the total reactive current and the resistive current must be taken into account. I sub T is equal to the square root of I sub R squared plus the square of the quantity I sub C minus I sub L. As an example, suppose you have a parallel RLC circuit with a resistive current of 3 milliamps, an inductive current of 11 milliamps, and a capacitive current of 15 milliamps. Substituting the circuit values into the formula yields I sub T equals the square root of 3 milliamps squared plus the square of the quantity 15 milliamps minus 11 milliamps. Completing the math yields a total RLC circuit current of 5 milliamps. You now should be able to calculate the total current and voltage in a parallel RLC circuit. As you can see, each mathematical operation is based on fundamentals that you've learned previously. Now let's see how to calculate the impedance for a parallel RLC circuit. You can use the same Ohm's law relationship for impedance that has been used for all other AC circuits presented so far. Z equals V divided by I. But you may not know these total values. For example, this parallel RLC circuit has a total voltage of 40 volts. The resistive current is 4 milliamps while the inductive current is 6 milliamps and the capacitive current is 9 milliamps. In order to solve for the total impedance, the total current will have to be found. The total circuit current, I sub T, is equal to the square root of I sub R squared plus the square of the quantity I sub C minus I sub L. This yields I sub T equals the square root of 4 milliamps squared plus the square of the quantity 9 milliamps minus 6 milliamps. Performing the operation shown produces a total circuit current of 5 milliamps. Now you can apply Ohm's law for finding the total circuit impedance. Z equals V sub T divided by I sub T. Substitute the values. Z is equal to 40 volts divided by 5 milliamps, producing a total circuit impedance of 8 kiloohms. Stop the program and complete activity number three. When finished, continue watching the program.
now you've seen the voltage, current, 